Hi, y'all. Welcome to the Grace Journaling Webcast. I'm your host, Susan Lee Rose. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this fun honeycomb background paper that can be used for all sorts of paper crafting projects. I'll be using distressed oxide inks, perfect pearl spray, and a hexagon stamp from Sweet and Sassy Stamps. The perfect pearl spray gives a beautiful pearlized shimmer to the page, which I really, really like. Please visit my YouTube channel, Grace Journaling, to view my other videos. If you enjoyed them, please like and share them. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be updated whenever I add new videos and tutorials. You can also find me on my blog at www.gracejournaling.com or follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Grace Journaling. Enjoy today's show! Hi y'all, this is Susan from Grace Journaling and today we're going to make a really cute honeycomb background paper that you can cut up and use in any of your card making, <clears throat> crafting or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover my tabletop with a little bit of wax paper. This will keep it a little bit neater. As you can see I've already got ink all over this so uh, having a little bit, trying to prevent not having so much is great. So I just put it down with a little bit of painter's tape. Nothing too spectacular. Just to keep my work table a little bit cleaner. Okay, we're starting and we're going to be working with Bristol paper. Um, I like Bristol paper because it's a little bit smoother than regular paper. So that's what we're going to be working with. To that, you're going to want to use these colors. Fossilized Amber, Wild Honey, and Antique Linen. These are the three Distress Oxide inks that we're going to be using. Um, this is still pretty new to me, using the Distress Oxide inks. Um, and new for me to using these brushes. Um, I haven't used the Distress Oxide inks very often. I've actually just recently got some and been playing around with them. So, it's new to me, but I'm learning. So, we're going to start with these three colors. Um, let's start with this uh, medium brush here. And we're going to go with this antique linen and I'm just going to rub my brush across that and then I'm just going to kind of start doing the color. We're blending it nicely here. We're going to be mixing several different colors in here. We just kind of want to have um, a variety of yellows to give it a very um, I don't know, you could really see the uh, color shining through different layers. It gives it different dimension. So I've just colored in a little bit with the antique linen. Now we're going to go in with the wild honey um, and we're going to go with the smaller brush here. And we're just going to kind of go around the edges, cross to the middle a little bit. That's all fine. Um, I like the way that these really blend so nice and I think it's nice too to do a little bit of a tap so there's a little bit um, kind of some different colors in there that gives it a little dimension because you're going to cut this down to um, smaller sizes to use for cards. You're most likely not going to use this all for you know one kind of card uh, you know the whole sheet at the time so I think that when you cut it down having the little splotches of darker mixed in there is going to look really nice and give it a kind of a extra dimension and, and color. So I'm just kind of going in there and just mixing it in and blending it. I like the way that these brushes blend this ink and I, and I really like this ink. I've always used uh, gelatos for when I want to do something that's kind of got more of a glow to it. But I really like the way that these look. Almost better. I'm still playing with them, so I haven't decided yet. So now we're going to go with the fossilized amber. And I'm going to go with the bigger brush. And we're just going to kind of fill in the other areas where they have not filled in. And just continue blending this. You can see how it's got a really pretty kind of uh, texture to it. Not texture, that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, it blends really nicely. 
and it's kind of got a lot of dimension because of the different colors. It's almost kind of a, I don't know, not really marble, but something sort of like that. So we want to make sure that this is good and covered. You got all your ink all over here. And I go in there like a little bit and kind of tap like this. Because this isn't, we don't necessarily want this to be smooth. We want it to kind of have that, um, a little more dimension than that, a little more um, random. So I just kind of, in the, you know, I put a little down like this and then spread it. Sorry if the camera is shaking just a little bit. Um, I am trying to figure out a better way of filming, but uh, for now, this is what I have, so that is what I'm using. Now this is kind of a darker, different shade, which I want to kind of mix this in a little bit. It was kind of add a little bit more of that. So now what I pretty much will do at this point is I'm just going to kind of blend it like this to make sure that there's not any blotches. So we've got that nice and blended. Okay, so we're going to put those away and we're going to come back in with the Perfect Pearls. Um, I don't know if you've ever used it before. This is actually something that I, is new to me, but it's really kind of cool. You mix it with water in a spray bottle and it gives a sheen to the paper. And you know how Ranger, the, the, the Distressed Oxide inks, react to water they leave little splotches well this will also add oops let me go on and put a little bit of tape on the top so we're not rolling down there we go so this will give it some sheen but on the same hand it also splotches it for us i got it all over my hands too so we're going to go in with some paper towels to soak up anything that's overly much it also gives that little splotchiness. I don't want to see how the sheen, you can kind of see the sheen. A little bit more, just right down the middle. All right, so what I usually will do at this point is I go in with my um, heat gun and make sure the page is good and dry. It also dries the little puddles of the, uh, gl uh, the glitter, the pearlized water that we put on there. It gives us some nice little, it's really cool when you look at them. I, you can't really see it, I don't think, on camera, but you can see it against the paper when you turn it in different ways. It gives some nice little pearlized water droplets, which are really nice for, for this project. I'm just going to get this dry. It doesn't have to be 100% dry, but you do want it most of the way dry before you start the next step. You can either just let it dry on its own, or you can, like I say, go on here with the heat gun and dry it up. Just fill the page and make sure that it is completely dry, or pretty much dry. There's a nice wet spot right there. Let me get it dry. Sometimes you have to hold it up a little bit. But you, you can't see it on camera, I don't think. But this has the most, the, the pearlized, the perfect pearls make a perfect, they just give a little bit of a pearlized uh, texture and coloration to the paper, which is really nice. Gives it just an extra dimension. So now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our rubber stamp. I'm using uh, the Cheerful Hexies from Sweet and Sassy Stamps. I'm using this one right here. And it's just the outline of the hexagon. We're going to add this to the paper. And we're just going to stamp them on. Um, we want to start off slightly off of the page so it looks like a complete background. And so when you cut it, it gives it a little bit more texture. 
see like this. And then you're just going to continue down the page with these hexagons. You don't have to be perfect. They just want them to go down the page like so. And you're going to fill the entire page with the stamped hexagons. Um, if they make a little mess like this, don't worry about it. That just adds to the character of the paper. Um, it's just another layer of um, texture that just adds a nice feature to the paper. So now you're just going to go in and you're going to do this for the entire page. And sometimes you can, like you said, you can get a couple of stamps off of the ink. Do it because that just gives it more texture. The different variations in color adds, you know, interest to the paper. So just go through here like this. And again, you want to kind of go off of the page and off of the page and just continue adding the hexagons. And this is a little time consuming, but that's okay. And if they touch, not a big deal. Like I said, it adds a little bit of interest and texture to the paper. So go for it. Just don't worry about it being perfect. Perfection is not what we're necessarily looking for with this project. We just want some interesting textures and patterns that will add, really make this a fun paper to use for projects. So you're just, like I said, this is kind of boring watching me just stamp, but this is what you do. And this is actually a pretty quick um, project. Uh, tomorrow I will actually do a post where I use this to um, make a card. And I will use this background to make a card. I know, y'all, I am not the most professional video, nor am I the best speaker. So I hope that what I'm saying makes sense and that I don't sound like a crazy woman. But I love bees. I don't know about you. I think that bees are really interesting. I was always loved when I would we would study them in school. Um, and I just think they're really neat. And I love the way that they make the honeycomb inside of their hive. And so this texture will be really nice for that card. Um, the card I'm using is going to be um, a kind of a thank you, gratitude type card. And I think it turn, will turn out really cute. We'll see. Y'all have to let me know how you like my videos. Um, tell me what you think that I could improve so forth and so on. So that is it guys. You just continue filling that page up and we are done. Thank you.